So I wanted to make a video talking about Tarod Taylor and what he could potentially bring to the Texans as maybe a plan B. Well, especially after the Deshaun Watson stuff has now come out, it seems more prevalent now than ever that we could be seeing Tarod Taylor get some starts in 2021 for sure. Uh, again, very weird situation, but I just want to talk about Tarod Taylor and what he brings to the Texans and Listen, uh, I do think he is a pretty decent player, and I actually think that there is more potential there. Uh, f currently, his contract is worth up to $12.5 million. Uh, he's going to get $5.5 million as long as he plays in 2021, So, or you know, even sits on the bench, just him being there, $5.5 million is what he's going to get with about $7 million in incentives. And he's kind of become one of those guys, almost like a, you know, a Josh McCown, Ryan Fitzpatrick type of just being the journeyman who is constantly good enough to be on a roster and good enough that he's a high quality backup, but not quite good enough to be a consistent starter and to get too many opportunities as a plan A for being a starter in a season. But let's get into the film study, talk about what he does well and what he has to improve on and just who he is as a player. So we'll start off with this one. It's going to be, that's the concept you see on the screen. So it's going to be a rollout to the top of the screen and Taylor has several different options. And watch, once this place uh, starts, you know, Taylor fakes the handoff, he runs to the top of the screen like he's supposed to, and there's really multiple options he could take on this one. He could throw it deeper, or he could throw it sort of the underneath check down area, and you know, some teams do this differently. A lot of teams do like to say, look at the, you know, go from shallow to deep. So maybe that's what the Chargers are doing and Taylor's doing what his coach is asking him to do. So maybe this isn't the best example, but it also is very possible that he le legitimately just has the option and is choosing the safer route. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because if you've watched Tarod Taylor, even if you don't remember this play, you know he's going to throw it to the shorter route. Watch. He just takes the little uh, check down route. And in fairness, it gets a first down. That got 13 yards. So you'll take that 10 out of 10 times. And I'm not trying to say this is a bad thing either. I'm legitimately just saying this is who he is as a player. He's not going to take chances and he is going to take check downs. That's just what he does. That's his philosophy on the best way to win football games. Because of this style, he's really never going to put up a bunch of bulk stats. In seasons when he was a starter, he never had more than 3,100 yards in a season. Uh, he only had 20 touchdowns once, and that was exactly 20 touchdowns. And the flip side is he's never thrown more than six interceptions. And in fact, his touchdown to interception ratio is 54 to 20, which is good, you know, uh, it's very good, but at the same time, it's very low. You would like that to be higher given the amount of times that he's played just in terms of the touchdowns, or maybe you wouldn't. It's up to you, really. I mean, that's that's kind of what you prefer, but this is just who he is as a player. I want to now show this play because honestly, I would like to see Taylor take more chances. I think he's a good enough player to pull it off. I really do. I think if he had more confidence, he would be better. And personally, my, my favorite philosophy uh, from an offense is you got to get chunk plays, you got to get explosives. Uh, it's just, you know, it's too hard to run a 12 play drive and get a touchdown. That's just too difficult. Something's going to go wrong on one of those plays. There's too many guys to make a mistake. But I do think that Taylor can do a pretty good, decent job. He actually has pretty good touch on his deep ball. He might not have the biggest arm, but he has pretty good touch on his deep ball. Like this one, it's going to be a, a cover one play. And he again, there's a receiver who's running deep, obviously. So this is a play that he could try and throw to. Watch. So Taylor takes a snap. And as you notice, at this point when he has to make the throw, because he's about to get hit, so he has to make this throw now, it's going to be tough to really put the right amount of touch on it. He wants to put it in an area where his receiver can get open, which usually means you just overthrow the defensive back and hope that your wide receiver has the speed to catch up. The issue is you can't just throw it as high as you want because there's a safety in the area, and he's going to try and run in and make the play. But watch this throw. I mean, this is just a thing of absolute beauty. That You couldn't ask for anything better than that. That's legitimately the perfect place to put that football, and that's what he can do. Every now and then, you will see some really good deep balls from Taylor, and I think that if we were to see a, you know, a sort of a system where he got to throw the ball more, uh, throw the ball down the field more, or just he made that mental shift to throw the ball down the field more, 
I think he would benefit from it. This is another thing that he can do really well. It's going to be uh, cover three zone. And, you know, you see the concept on the top of the screen. Uh, I've circled in white the route that he's going to end up wanting to throw to. But that's not the main thing I want to talk about on this play. Once the ball is snapped, you're going to see that an edge rusher pulls off a spin move and is trying to get to the inside of the tackle, meaning that Taylor, you know, he's under pressure right here. But... Taylor is legitimately great at getting around pressure. It's not just the fact that he can, you know, move around guys and escape when things are disastrous, but still ends up running into more sacks. We've seen plenty of guys who do that. He legitimately doesn't really run around that much when he has to every now and then. But for the most part, even when he does that, he's still able to get around the pressure and he usually only runs when he has to. Watch him scramble outside the pocket and then be able to make the throw and pick up a big gain. And that's another thing that I like about a quarterback is the kind of quarterbacks who can, you know, when they get outside the pocket, they still look downfield and are still looking to throw the ball because at that point, it actually makes more sense to still throw the ball as opposed to just try and run and pick up six yards or so because the chances are someone will be open if a play's been going on for five seconds. So that's another thing that he can do very well uh I, you know he's not someone who just puts his head down after getting outside the pocket now there are a couple of negatives this one is one of them it's going to be a cover three zone and you see there's two routes that i really want you to watch one's just going to be a short route under uh sort of in the middle of a gap in coverage the other one is going to be deeper but also, less about the actual play itself and more about the game situation right here. There's four and a half minutes left in the game. So it's the fourth quarter. This is a second down and 11 and the Chargers are up three points. So they're trying to kill the clock right here and getting a first down would absolutely be huge. I think that Taylor is still saying we got to run out the clock too to some degree. So watch, uh, once this play starts, Taylor's making his decision very quickly. He doesn't have to make his decision now, but he wants to because he wants to get the ball there in a hurry. But I think he would have been better suited throwing over the top a little bit. He could have had a window there. Again, it's a little bit different because now the Cincinnati players are adjusting to Taylor throwing to uh, the other guy. So it's a little bit different there. Maybe it doesn't get open. But I think it would have been worth taking that chance because getting a first down would be huge. You could kill two more minutes of the clock. This ball does get there quickly and it's, you know, a, a good job to pick up as many yards as possible. They nearly got the first down on that. It, it ended up being a 10-yard gain. But they didn't end up getting the first down, and then Joe Burrow, you know, marched down the field. He was able to, uh, you know, they should have tied the game. There was a missed chip shot field goal that didn't happen. You do have to wonder if, you know, maybe that situation would have been avoided entirely had Taylor taken the deeper play. And again, this isn't necessarily a knock on Taylor because some coaches would want to see him do that. I just, me personally, I don't like that. And I want to show one more play. Uh, this one's just... One of many examples I saw, this does just jump out at you on tape, and it's kind of confusing. Uh, maybe one of you, maybe someone in the comments will know exactly uh, exa what's going on. This is a cover, you know, four zone. It's you see the concept, same concept I showed earlier. Uh, blah blah blah. Watch what happens. So as you see, Taylor takes the snap, and you notice that right here there's kind of an opening. This is a shot that he could take for sure. Uh, it would be risky though. And as I said, I would like to see him take more chances. He does have the capability to do this. But what's going to be weird about this throw itself is that while it does appear that that's his target, watch what happens with the ball. This is just going to be way overthrown, which makes me think, well, is he just trying to throw it out of bounds? And it seems like a lot of these times he is trying to throw this out of bounds. Uh, sometimes not so much. I don't really know exactly if this is intentional or not. And there's a lot like this. So I'm not sure if he just completely whiffs on a ton of throws. Uh, he certainly does whiff on some throws. He's not the most accurate quarterback out there. But there's a lot of these that seem like they could be throwaways, could be uh, him, you know, just missing. I think it's a throwaway. I think that sometimes he throws the ball away and he just picks a target to throw over their heads so he won't get a penalty, which does make sense, obviously. But it also kind of goes back to my point of, listen, he's going to throw the ball away a good amount. That's just kind of what he, in his nature, he's a cautious player. And I do think he'd be benefited, especially, you know, if he ends up starting for the Texans, who knows what will happen. But if he's starting for this Texans team, like take some chances, see what happens, you know, because that's how Ryan Fitzpatrick has kept his job because he'll take chances. But yeah, anyways, weird situation, but figured to make a video talking about Taylor, uh, what he brings to Houston. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know. What are your thoughts of just 
your, your thoughts of uh, Terod Taylor as a uh, player. We don't need to get into the Watson stuff. Just uh, what are your thoughts of Terod Taylor? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>